Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, my name is Tanika and in today's video I am giving you some speed reviews on some new makeup that I have been testing out over the last month or so. Let's get straight into it and start out on a high note with the NARS Laguna Sunkissed Bronzing Cream. Oh my god. This, oh, actually this was limited edition. Oh, let me check that it's still available before I go raving about it because I don't want to disappoint anyone here. Ooh, okay. It is still on the Mecca website, but it does say it's sold out. So I don't really know what that means, but um, I'm gonna talk about it anyway, because if you can get your hands on it, I'm telling you, get your hands on it. This cream bronzer is beautiful. Now it is pretty pricey at $58. I do expect that from NARS and look, as you know, I am more of an affordable makeup kind of gal, but after hearing such rave reviews on Instagram, I had to pick this up. Now the formula of this is a beautiful, soft and blendable, like really blendable cream. You only need the tiniest amount as well. Like when I say just touch, like a touch, tap your brush in the top there and then I still like to tap it out on the lid so that I don't have too much product but it just blends so seamlessly into the skin. It does look quite deep in the pan especially if you have a fair skin like me you might be a little bit worried but let me swatch it. So if you continue to blend 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 it shears out just beautifully. It does have a slight glow to it as well. Much like the Laguna powder bronzer, it just has a beautiful sheen, but it's nothing overly glowy. Now I could continue raving about this, but I'm trying to keep these speedy. So if you love cream bronzers or just want to have a little bit of a splurge, then I definitely recommend this one. Now onto some powder bronzers and going to the complete other end of the pricing scale, I have the Essence Sun Club Matte Bronzing Powder. Now this one comes in a huge pan, you're getting 15 grams, and what I liked about the look of this was how light it is. This is in the shade 01 Natural, it has a matte finish, and at first I wasn't really a fan, I found that I couldn't actually pick up any product on my brush, but I do think there was some kind of layer on top that just needed to be worked through. I know that can be a problem when it comes to powder products. And now that I've gotten there, it does work nicely. I don't think this is a bronzer I would say rush out and buy it immediately, but if you are after something that is very fair, easy to work with and affordable, then I would say pick this up. But is it my favorite? Not really. Next is the Skin Lights Bronzer by Revlon, and this is in the shade 005 Havana Gleam. Now this bronzer really surprised me. I just picked it up on a whim and I am so glad I did. Now this shade is also very fair, but if we compare it to the Essence, you can see it's a bit more neutral. The Essence has a little bit more warmth to it. You can see through the orange there. The Revlon is such a beautiful shade for fair skin and the formula of this is stunning. It is incredibly soft and creamy, but it's a powder. It just blends beautifully onto the skin. It feels amazing. And it also has that tiny bit of a sheen, which just gives you that gorgeous sun kiss glow. I would definitely recommend the Revlon bronzer. Next, I have a liquid blush by NYX, and this is from the Sweet Cheeks range. And this blush is a mousse formula. Now it does come in what looks like a squeezy tube packaging, but it actually has a doe foot applicator. The applicator actually looks like it would work really well <laughs> for lipstick. It's got that nice point there. Now with this, I don't actually tap it straight onto my cheeks. What I learnt about this blush is that it is extremely pigmented. You only need the tiniest amount. Now I did purchase this online, so the shade was a little bit off. This one here is called Baby Doll. It's a very bright pink, but if I go in with a light hand, I can still get it to work really nicely for me. <laughs> Look how bright it is. And it is just so opaque as well. Now this does dry down to be a matte formula and it does dry down pretty fast. So you do have to work quickly with it. 
I like to apply this with the bum of my beauty blender. I find it just helps to sheer it out. I like this blush because it's quite long lasting. Now that I've got the hang of it, it's easy to apply and there are a few shades in the range. I would like to try a few of the others, but I definitely recommend this blush if you are after something that is more matte. I actually think I used that blush for the first time in a video <laughs> and <laughs> that's when I learned my lesson. So I'll link that down below if you want to watch. Next, I have some eyeshadows by Milani. This is the Most Wanted palette and it's 110 Partner in Crime. Now, again, I picked this one up online. Milani has recently been introduced to Priceline. I don't know, six plus months ago, I'm not really sure. And there is a limited range. Of course, I wanted to try some things out. They are a little bit pricier than I was expecting. This eyeshadow palette that comes with six shades was around $20. The shades in this palette are beautiful though. I love the range. They all have a matte finish and they are very soft and again like creamy they're really easy to use they have a good amount of pigment they blend out easily they build up easily if you're a neutral lover or just like to do simple looks every day i think this is going to do you very well i feel like drugstore shadows can be quite hit and miss they've definitely gotten better over the years but this one is definitely a hit and I would recommend it. Next, I've got a few products here by Morphe because a few months ago I did do a dedicated video testing out the brand. And I have some here that I like and some that I don't. So starting with a winner is the Morphe 2 Hint Hint Skin Tint. And this is a sheer to medium coverage skin tint. And it is so beautiful. Now I picked up the shade Hint of Latte. I did use the online shade finder and this one is described to be light with neutral pink undertones, but I find it is a tad too dark for me. I can mix in some lightning drops and it's perfect, but this formula is just so beautiful. It's very lightweight, but it still gives you a decent amount of coverage. So it's got the dropper applicator. I'll just put some on my hand here. So you can see it's quite liquidy. It blends out really beautifully. You can see there that it still has decent coverage. This is my kind of skin tint. It has a beautiful finish. It leaves the skin looking nice and dewy and hydrated. I've started testing out a few skin tints over the last couple of months and this one is definitely my favorite. Next, I have a blending sponge, and I'm pretty sure this is the one that Jaclyn Hill would rave about all the time. I am a bit of a sponge snob, to be honest. I have tried quite a lot, and I just always go back to the Beauty Blender, the original Beauty Blender. There is nothing else like it. Like, people say, this is similar, that's similar. It's just not, okay? It's just not. This sponge okay i don't like it all right so this sponge like triples in size it becomes humongous like too big way too big okay i need to figure out a way to describe the textures so i have a beauty blender here this one is a bit more porous and it's a very just soft and squishy sponge whereas this one isn't as porous and it feels a bit more rubbery, I guess you could say. One of the big differences I notice is that the Morphe sponge, when you're blending product into your face, it makes a very loud tapping sound. Whereas the Beauty Blender doesn't. It's like it pushes it into the skin more gently, whereas this sponge is just tapping it on top. I hope that makes sense. I'm not really sure how to describe it because it's more about the feel, but I just, I just don't like it. See you later. Another product I didn't like is the Make It Big Mascara. First of all, the packaging is super cute. It's black, it's sleek. It says Morphe in like a shiny finish there. Very nice. The wand looks like my kind of mascara wand. I'm like, oh yes, give it to me. It's kind of got that hourglass, better than sex mascara wand shape, but it's just gluggy. It's too gluggy. Too much product comes out on the wand and I just don't like the way it coats the lashes. I find when there's too much product, it clumps everything together. You can't get a separated look. And when you pull it out, it's just 
gluggy. Like see on the end of the wand there, how there's just mascara sitting there, like, I don't know. And all around the inside of the tube here, it's kind of started to dry down and thicken up. And this has not been open for very long. So I had high hopes for this because I loved the shape of the wand, but it just doesn't perform how I like. Another one I wasn't a big fan of is the Morphe 2 Brow Crush Tinted Brow Gel. Again, the packaging, I'm like, damn, that's so cute, so sleek. I love that it has a tiny little wand. Look at this little one. Like, I love that. But the product itself is too pigmented. It's too much. Even though the wand is so little, it just applies way too much product and it's too, like it's too liquidy that it kind of just goes everywhere. It doesn't just stay in the hairs, it smudges and then you try and like blend it and fix it up and more product just gets everywhere. I just, I wasn't a fan, which is a real shame because I really like the shade of this. And as I said, I love the tiny little wand, but it just, it just didn't perform. And then the last one for Morphe and one that I did enjoy is the highlighter in the shade Spark. This looks like a very boring kind of product. If you were to see it online, you'd probably just be like, whatever. But it actually performs really, really well. I first thought the color might be a little bit too deep, but it works beautifully. Let me give it a swatch. Oh my God. That. It's quite metallic, but it doesn't accentuate your pores or any texture. It blends beautifully into the skin. Look at that glow it gives when the light hits it. Oh my God. And it just looks so smooth. This is definitely an underrated product. And as I said, if I saw this online, I would just scroll right past it. But the formula is actually beautiful and I think it would double really well as an eyeshadow. And lastly, I have the NYX Marshmallow Primer. Oh my god, I love this stuff. It has the most beautiful kind of whipped texture. It fills in pores slightly. It's not like extremely pore filling, but it does a beautiful job. And it also gives a very hydrated look to the skin. Whenever I apply this, I feel as though the pores around my nose here look smoothed out and I just have a beautiful glow to the skin. It's such a gorgeous primer. The packaging is beautiful. It smells amazing and it does everything that it says it's going to do. This one has been super raved about over on TikTok and if you can get your hands on it, I definitely would. I find that pore filling primers leave a very matte, flat look to the skin. Whereas because this also hydrates, to me, I'm getting the best of both worlds. I am trying to test out a few foundations at the moment. I want to give a review on the Misha BB cream that I recently tested out in my testing Jessica Braun's favorite makeup. But we've been wearing masks here for the last five weeks. They've been mandatory. I have to wear it at work all day. So I don't really see the point in applying foundations when my mask is just going to rub it off and I'm not getting a proper review. So I really, like I have some thoughts on this, but I'm not sure if I can give them to you yet because I haven't truly tested it without a mask. All right, well that is all for the products today. If you wanna know what makeup I'm wearing, you can head over to my Instagram. I have an IG reel dedicated to this look. So you can go and see what products I used. As for my hair, oh my God, I actually tested out heatless curls last night using a kit that was sent to me from Happy Hair. So it comes with this long silk piece here and you wrap your hair around it and sleep in it overnight and it worked so well. I'm super happy with the results. If you wanna see it in action, I have it in a vlog that I can link down below. If you're new to my channel, I would love it if you would take a look around and consider subscribing. If you want more from me, you can come and follow me over on TikTok and Instagram. But besides that, I hope you're all having a fabulous day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.